Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. In this Mass, our Lord Jesus Christ opens His heart to all of us, and we in turn also open our hearts to receive the love and graces coming from His Sacred Heart. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery of His love, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to, to people, people of, of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you, you. We, we give, give you, you thanks for, for your great glory. glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of His love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that fount of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, When Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk, who took them in my arms. I drew them with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet, though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed. My pity is stirred. I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man, the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim His name. Among the nations, make known His deeds. Proclaim how exalted is His name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for the glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, to me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given, to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery, hidden from ages past in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in Him. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that He may grant you, in accord with the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in the inner self, 
and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate this great feast, the solemnity of the most sacred heart, of Jesus. And so today, we focus on the heart of Jesus, the heart of God. That is why we will see in our readings from the scriptures today that our focus is the heart of God. And we see, my dear brothers and sisters, in our readings how God loves us using His heart. In our first reading today, we hear from the book of the prophet Hosea how God explains to His people that He loves us not just with his mind, but he loves us with his heart. Sinasabi ng Panginoon sa unang pagbasa na kung mamakalin ko kayo, gamit lang ang aking isip, ay eh matagal ko na kayong iniwan. Bakit? Sapagkat minahal ko kayo, pero pinagtaksilan niyo pa rin ako. Di ba sinasabi natin yan minsan? Kahit sa pag-ibig ng mga tao, kapag pinagtaksilan ka na, kapag binalikan mo pa yan, tanga ka na. <laughs> yan ang sinasabi natin. Gamitin mo naman ang isip mo. Pero ang Diyos, hindi lang isip ang kanyang ginagamit, ang kanyang puso. Kaya nga sabi sa unang pagbasa natin, even if the people did not 
know and acknowledge me, I will not vent my anger. I will not destroy them. I will not take vengeance against them. But instead, I will love them with my heart. That is how God loves us. He uses His heart to love us. And the image of Jesus in our gospel passage today on the cross, when the soldier pierced his side and blood and water came forth from his side, that is the image of the heart of Jesus as the source of overflowing graces for us. Pinakikita po sa atin sa Ebanghelyo na ang puso ni Jesus ang pinanggagalingan ng lahat ng biyaya, dumadaloy na biyaya, pag-ibig, pag-asa galing sa Panginoong Diyos. And so whenever we look at the cross, Whenever we see the wound at the side of Jesus, we see there that the graces coming from Jesus comes from His heart. That is why in the exhortation of St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians in our second reading today, he reminds us, if God loves us with His heart, if Jesus blesses us from His heart, then we also must love God, have faith in God with our heart. And so today, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray with our heart. para po hindi tayo ma-distract. No? Marami nagtatanong sa akin yan, Father, bakit ba palagi pa nagdadasal ako, nadidistract ako? Kasi madalas ang isip ang ginagamit natin sa pagdarasal. No? Pray with your heart. Because God uses His heart to love us, let us pray to God with our heart. Listen to God with your heart. Father, bakit ba kapag nagmimisa, pag first reading, second reading, homily, parang na ano na ako eh, parang gusto ko, ay, hindi ako nakakapakinig mabuti. Maybe you are just listening with your ears. Listen with your heart. Father, bakit ba kapag nagmimisa, eh, parang tamad na akong sumagot. Tamad na tamad akong magdasal. Baka you are just praying with your mouth. Pray and answer with your heart. That is the exhortation of St. Paul in our second reading today. Kaya nga, lagi ko reminder yan sa ating mga lectors and commentators. Whenever you read, you do not just read with your mind. You do not just read with your lips. You read with your heart. Kaya alam nyo minsan, kapag ang commentator ay may puso na nagbabasa. Alam nyo kung bakit? Kasi minsan, kapag walang puso, ang bilis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the... Ang bilis, no? But you are talking to Jesus. You are talking to Jesus, the Lamb of God. You do not just say, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us with your lips. You talk to Jesus, the Lamb of God, with your heart. Kaya mamaya, babantayan natin yung commentator. <laughs> How do you speak to Jesus? How do you answer to Jesus? Do we pray with our hearts? Do we listen with our hearts? Do we speak to God with our hearts? My dear brothers and sisters, the solemnity today of the Sacred Heart of Jesus tells us that God loves us with our hearts. He speaks to us with His heart. 
His graces come from His heart. It is but proper that we also love Him with our hearts. In this Eucharist, Jesus opens His heart to us in the Eucharist and in His Word. Let us also open our hearts to receive His overflowing graces. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We can pray to the Father with great confidence because in Christ, He has set His heart upon us. For every petition, let us say, Fill us with your love, Lord. Fill us with your love, Lord. That the Catholic Church may be a credible sign and instrument of Christ's love, let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill us with, with your, your love, love, Lord that families may live in true love and mutual understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill us with, with your, your love, Lord. Lord. That those who labor and are overburdened may find rest in the generous heart of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill us, us with, with your, your love, Lord. Lord. That the sick may know the love of Christ as they unite themselves with the suffering of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill us, us with, with your, your love, love Lord. Lord. That the dead may find eternal joy in the heart of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Fill, Fill us, us with, with your, your love, love Lord. Lord. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Merciful Father, receive these prayers we offer in union with the pierced heart of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands 
for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look, O Lord, we pray, on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, He gave Himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from His pierced side, the wellspring of the Church's sacraments, so that won over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. 
Let us pray. May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that, drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ngayon po ay dadasalin natin ang panalangin para sa mahal na Birhen ng Antipolo. Mahal na ina at reyna ng mag-anak na Pilipino na may katungkulang magmalasakit at alagaan ng kagalingan ng kabataan, isinasamo namin sa iyo alang-alang sa mga biyayang kinamtan mo sa pagsunod sa kagustuhan ng Ama Nakingin mo sa Diyos ang kagalingang walang katapusan ng mga kabataang Pilipino. Gayun din naman sa pagsasyam na ito, kung ito'y ukol sa kapurihan ng Diyos at kagalingan ng kaluluwa namin. Amen. Ang imahen po ng mahal na Birhen ng Antipolo ay mananatili po ng siyam na araw dito sa Manila Cathedral. At pagkatapos po ng misa na ito ay ibababa po siya doon po sa uh, uh, gilid ng Manila Cathedral upang makalapit po ang mga tao at makapag-alay ng kanilang mga panalangin at kandila para sa mahal na birhen. At uh, magtatapos po ang pagbisita ng imahen dito sa ating katedral next Friday, June 18. At sa tanghali po ng June 18, ay magdiriwang po ng banal na misa ang ating mahal na tagapangasiwa, Bishop Broderick Pabilio, upang gawin ang reenactment ng kanyang coronation because on June 18 ay 395th anniversary ng pagdating ng imahen sa Pilipinas galing sa Acapulco, Mexico. And so we invite all of you to visit us here in the Manila Cathedral and to visit the image of Our Lady of Antipolo and let us pray for peace and good voyage, especially in our times today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh